I don't even know what's going on. Oh, wow. Good morning. I bet you thought we were gonna be on our way to SEMA right now, and we're not because I got my days mixed up and we have one extra day to work on the record. So I hurried for almost no reason. So we're gonna do a little bit of work on the record this morning. We're going to load up and we're gonna head down to Vegas. What we're starting with is battery boxes. So we're gonna build those. We're building the world's largest off-road record. We're making it out of metal. So we're gonna show you that now. <laughs> There's one of them. We'll cut this out and then we'll trace it because we are lazy. Let's see how it fits before we make another one just like it. Even edges all the way around. Do you want to cut these on that chop saw? Cut me four of these. Cut me four of these. You're going to be cutting this side of the line, but taking it. And then you can copy them. So we're going to get these cut out so we can get them welded up. So some of you may remember that we were planning on putting the batteries down low in the belly pan. It's not going to work for reasons. So we've decided to put them up here in the bed. And I'm thinking we're gonna put them right there. One on each side. So we're just gonna build the trays and then we'll plug weld them right there. That's how they will be attached. So this is ready for welding. All right, I've got to go do some work on the next video you're going to see. Not this one, but a different one. And I'm going to leave Lizzie to finish this up, build the other battery box. Test the battery out. It's gonna be Perfect. nice. What do you think, Ed? These will work for battery boxes. Yeah, that work. How you gonna mount them, though? Just weld them in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm okay with that. We have yet to build the retainers, the hold downs that hold these batteries down. We can't do it because we got a call. It's going to take the rest of the day, which means we're going to be loading this wrecker after dark. So that's exciting. But before we go, I want to tell you, we have a winner for the person who guessed the unfinished weight of the wrecker. And that person is Dirt Clods. So if you have the username Dirt Clod and you guess the correct weight of the wrecker, I need you to email us at info at mattsoffroadrecovery.com. So reach out to us and we'll send you out your hoodie. Thanks for playing. We'll get to do this again when it's finished. When we play the game of guess the official weight of the world's largest off-road recovery wrecker, the prize for being the first person to guess its official weight is going to be $1,000 worth of merchandise from mattsoffroadrecovery.com. Should I do that? Hefe's not here to stop me. I am in so much trouble. Yes, he is. <laughs> All right, it is SEMA Eve. We are out here in the shop. It is dark outside and we are gonna be loading this on the trailer because first thing in the morning, we're headed down to Vegas to drop this off. All right, we got the wrecker loaded up last night and now we are headed to Las Vegas to take this to SEMA and put it in the booth. All right, we are down here, getting ready to drop this off. A little bit of confusion, doesn't run, so that makes it kind of difficult. So we got a call uh, from this gentleman who's stuck in the parking lot uh, in this big yellow, I think it's like a tow truck or off-road something. Here's what we're looking for. Here you needed a jump pack. Oh yeah. You ready for this? 
Are you ready for this? Uh, oh yeah. We got it on there. It's your turn to get it off. So what I did was I built this thing and I didn't put any guts in the transmission so we couldn't even drive it. Plus the steering's not hooked up. There's a lot of things wrong with it. But they got me out, didn't even give me a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks guys, thank, thank you so you. much. You. It's just weird that it's here. <laughs> like, look what it's next to. It's next to these cars that are getting detailed. <laughs> just, I think we scared the Corvette off that was next to us. <laughs> He's gone. Well, it looks awesome right there. Yeah, it's cool. All right, we're back from Vegas. The wrecker's down there waiting for SEMA. That's gonna be tomorrow, but today we have an empty bay in the shop. That won't stand. We're gonna have to do something today. The first thing that we're gonna do in this empty bay today is we are going to be taking these race line wheels and we're going to be stuffing them inside those Milestar Patagonia tires. These wheels are gonna be for Jamie's one ton YJ project. Can't wait to get started on that. As soon as the wrecker's done, that's the next thing. What are you doing? Helping. up we're just gonna be putting air in them and then that job is done all right we are back in Las Vegas we finally found some parking we drove around in circles for I don't know 30 minutes we talked to a lot of people that told us we were in the wrong place we're finally parked and we're headed over to the convention so this is my first time to SEMA where's Jamie back here you guys all have really long legs so like I said this is my first time going to the SEMA event it's a pretty big event it's really crazy now we're trying to find Robbie Robbie has our passes to get in and he's just kind of walking our direction so trying to find us we're walking his direction trying to find him we're both on the move so who knows it could be a whole comedy of errors oh yeah and we're late we had a job come in I broke the Morver it's been a whole mess today we were supposed to be here like hours and hours ago. We're gonna figure it out though. All right, so we got a hold of Robbie. He's about five minutes out and we're just waiting right here because these fine gentlemen right here won't let us through without a badge. I'm assuming I haven't tried. <laughs> what level of clearance do you have, man? I got level 10. Yeah, I'm getting back in. That's for sure. Awesome. Here's yours, Matt Wetzel. Super official. So all the way down there, you can't see it, but all the way down there is Hefe carrying the ginormous rope we're gonna be like draping over the wrecker. If you'd like your own rope to drape over your wrecker, you can go to mattsoffroadrecovery.com. <laughs> this is my bling. Does this make you super cool? Hold on, now I need a grill just. <laughs> Does this rope make my butt look big? Okay, are we ever <laughs> So we're gonna go to the wrecker and then you're gonna show us where Prismatic is. Yeah. So the wrecker is in the registration area. They call them featured vehicles. We're kind of in the corner, but it's cool. How about that for the soft shackle? Is that good? Just like that? What? Do you approve of that? Oh, that's good, yeah. Do you guys recognize this car? This is the car that inspired this right here. Pretty cool to see it in real life. All right, so we've just been wandering around SEMA here. It is totally overwhelming. I can't, I can't comprehend what's happening here. So we've been talking to some really neat companies that can help us do what we do build our recovery vehicles. 
this is really neat if you've never been to SEMA it's indescribable and overwhelming all right we're getting ready we're, it's almost time to go to prismatic coatings booth and kind of hang out with fab rats and robbie and all that stuff gold nugget head's gonna be here lizzie's gonna be here we just grabbed a really quick lunch under protest we're eating while we're walking yeah jamie and that. tom wants to sit down but ain't nobody got time for that let's go <laughs> So we're getting ready to meet all these good people. They're standing in line to come see everybody. It's gonna be They're us. They're to see me. It's gonna be, it's gonna be us, and it's gonna be Fab Rats, and it's gonna be Robbie Layton's crew. Anybody else? I don't know um, so Kevin from Powder Trim Coatings is supposed to be here. I haven't heard from him. Chad's no. Fab's coming. Oh, Chad's Fab? Um, yeah, we got the whole crews. It's gonna be nice. Robbie says these are good for if you're nervous. Yeah, just chew on mints. Oh man. Yeah, see? Oh, perfect. Look at it, just like <laughs> wipe it away. So we're kind of hiding in the golden nugget right now because people keep jumping out of line to get pictures and stuff. So we're trying to make ourselves less accessible without being total jerks. Now I'm just imagining that I'm driving away, running them over. Mitch. So what's the latest joke you have? Knock knock. Who's there? Anta. Anta, Let me in and to borrow something. I don't even know what's going on. There's something going on. First of all, thanks for coming by and thanks for bringing the heavy wrecker. We appreciate you showing off all the winches on it. This is Andrew. Andrew's our winch engineer. And uh, how's it going? Great to meet you. When you called and asked for seven winches to go on the wrecker, I could only picture you trying to fumble through which wireless remote went to which winch. So we started thinking up ideas and okay, maybe we'll, we'll color code each one. We'll put electrical tape on the blue one and it goes to the blue. And Andrew said, hold on, give me a few days. I got some ideas. So Andrew and I went back and forth. Um, I think we came up with a solution you'd like. So note the color of the case. That's a good color. We got one of one. All of your remotes are going to be in one place. All your switches. Yeah, yeah. One power button to turn everything on. Oh, that's awesome. And then because you need a place to put that inside the cab, you yeah, got a right place to put it. A huge wrecker and a huge remote. <laughs> yeah. And then of course you can't just have one set of switches. So this awesome. will be able to get mounted on the on the dash. So if you're on the seat and you need to adjust something, all your controls are there. And then you're not going to lose any remotes or be fumbling around. So. This is how we're running all the winches. Yeah, that's great. Dude. This one's a remote and this one's manual yeah. inside the cab. It's awesome. Thank you so much. That is that's, <laughs> that's the solution to a big problem. Look how they're labeled. Like you get in the more bear and there's no labels anywhere. You gotta guess. This one's like labeled and the layout of the actual winches of the machine. That's awesome. Fancy. Well, thank you so much. This is amazing. Glad really like appreciate it. it. This is the only way that the tow truck gets around right now, is with the winches. <laughs> the winches. <laughs> it's on point. We hey, have the man with the Yes, yeah, we're, we're live. live. <laughs> so when's the competition? There's a competition, no? A wrecker? It's in the future. This has to be done. Paul's has to be done. Rory's has been done. I know. Rory. We're <laughs> coming for you. <laughs> Ooh. Eric from BSF is there for sure. Okay. Paul from Fabrats is there for sure. I'm going to be there for sure. And then we got one somebody other on person, yep. one An special invitation. guest. I've got a thing over here. Okay. Hi, and then a thing up there. Okay, go karts tonight. Be there or be square. We're there. Sounds good. It's rolling. I don't get my face in it. <laughs>
We gotta get one of these, man. It's like a people hauler. We're breaking Guinness Book of World Records in Vegas. 20 of us on a golf cart. And it's a rento. Have a good one, man. Off road. All right, we're here to do some racing right out there. We're gonna go race some go karts. It's gonna be fun. I'm gonna go show them up. I can't hear anything or breathe in here. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there I can breathe. I got a green one because it's my favorite color. Pretty good, and then Lizzie passed me like I was standing still. I <laughs> went yesterday. Was was so good. I could not, I could not catch anybody on the straight, so I just kept I was catching down. those guys at the very end, and oh. then they slowed down. I was like, "Are you?" Oh, uh, we were about to lap some people. I know. So, what's your fastest lap time? Twenty-six point five. You're two tenths faster than my fastest lap. <laughs> That's pretty much the same. All right, it is way past bedtime. We had a lot of fun racing go-karts, hanging out with the HP Tuner crowd. We all raced really fast. How fast did you go? I went really fast. How fast did you go? A little faster than him. <laughs> well, I went super fast. How fast did you go, Lizzie? Super fast! All right, we'll see you tomorrow morning. I told you we'd see you in the morning, so we are walking back to SEMA, getting our exercise in, getting our steps We've in. We've been getting our exercise in for, this is the third day now. We've got a lot of fun things planned today. Can't wait to show you what we have in store for you and for us and for them. We bumped into Rich Rebuilds here. He's got a V8 Tesla that's super cool. Have you recovered any electric vehicles before? Yeah tons of them. Really? Oh, they drive everywhere everybody else does. Really? Yep, they just drive out in the sand. <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. It's so, such a crazy concept. And yeah. then just... Holy smokes. Yeah, it's fully built uh, stroker kit, supercharger, I mean, you name it, it's there. It's an LS3 out of a Camaro and a rear end out of a Camaro. Oh, okay. And on the inside, it's a six-speed sequential shifter. So you just like tap, 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 shift up and down. Yeah. And that small screen right there is a standalone hall tech system. Oh. It controls the fuel, you know, um, air delivery and things like that. We have uh, actually three fuel pumps in here. Three fuel pumps and one lift pump. Nice. So it has, it's built to handle, you know, well over a thousand horsepower. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and it's all, it's so clean. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that's cool. the biggest thing. Once you close this thing, and you close the rear hatch, you don't really notice anything, and you still have most of the space. All right, we're here at the Miller booth. Lizzie said that she wants to do some welding. Yeah, and they've got fun. These, they've got these little uh, welding stations. So we're MIG welding 023 on 14 gauge okay. on our uh, Multimatic 220. There we go. That's nice. Sweet, that was awesome. One full line. Challenge me to a weld off. <laughs> oh, sure. You want to do it? I'm gonna have to, you challenged me. Okay, here you go. All right. So apparently they make stuff called PPE that you're supposed to wear when you're welding. Who knew? You know, this stuff could really catch on. How would you burn your hands though? No, oh, I'm gonna have to figure that out. Lizzie beat me, I can already tell you that right now. What's your name? Robert. Robert, yeah, Robert's gonna pick you. the winner. So we're going with Lizzie's. Yeah, sweet. <laughs> there you are. Thank you very much. This should have been sweet. mine. <laughs> All right, we're back here at the Wrecker and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about this. Like this is crazy. No disrespect to the Wrecker or to SEMA, but it's kind of an anti-SEMA build. The level of, of uh, craftsmanship and quality going into the paint and body work on all these cars, this is definitely more rugged. It kind of stands out. This is a diamond in the rough. We've still got some work to make it running. A lot of the parts are on the shelf at the shop. We've just got to do it. We're going to get straight back onto this. So timeline for getting this done, it's going to be about two months. King of the Hammers is going to be its first like debut out 
in the wild. I mean, lots of things can change between now and then, but that's that's our goal. So what's left on this? We've still got the steering to sort out front and rear. We've got all the wiring from uh, the interior, all the chassis wiring. We've got the monster transmission to install right now. The transmission in this is just hollow. It's just a placeholder. We got shift levers, all the shift controls for the transfer case and transmission. You know, we got some interior appointments to do. Obviously in the future, we're gonna be getting air conditioning and all that stuff. We've still got the brakes to figure out. We're gonna be going up to Heavy D's. He's already figured the brakes out for these axle techs. So we're gonna be taking it up there, get those cut out, installed. We got the internal bead locks we've got to put in the wheels. We've got the light systems. Everything we have left to do, we've already got on the shelf. We've just got to find time to bolt it on there. All right, so it is Friday morning. It is the last day of SEMO. We're just kind of hanging out here with the wrecker. We're meeting people, shaking hands, kissing babies, all that stuff. This has just been an incredible experience. We're tired. I am very tired. We've been walking all over, back and forth. Matt and Jamie have been walking all over the place. They're totally exhausted. I don't know why they don't just take these Teslas. They'll take you wherever you want to go. This is cool. <laughs> These Teslas pick you up and take you wherever you want to go. Oh yeah? So they could take us to our car and we wouldn't have to walk. Go ahead. All right, it has been a crazy, long, hard week with stuff sprinkled in the middle of it. I don't really want to drag that thing up here. We got this new winch controller. Like the guys at Harbor Freight built us this one-off stuff to run all the winches. And they built a, an auto home button right here. So we're going to give it a try. We want it to come up to the shop. Auto home. I learned a little something at SEMA with the Tesla boring holes project and all that. EV. I've got something really exciting that I want to do. We are here with Jillian from the Dove Center and we have Tammy here. If you're not familiar with what the Dove Center is, it is an organization, a nonprofit that helps people that are in bad situations get out of those situations, get their feet back under them and then start their new life in the direction where they're not subject to abuse and, and that type of stuff. So hopefully when you watch a channel, you'll realize how important family is to me and how important it is to feel safe in your family, however that family is structured. We serve specifically victims of domestic violence and sexual assault. And so if someone's in need or they're in a crisis, they can call us and we have housing opportunities, resources, just ways to help them get out of that situation and then find healing and safety as they move forward. I am a survivor of domestic violence. One thing that I learned over the years is that the first important thing is for people to feel safe and be able to reach out and know there's places that can help them. And you guys depend a lot on donations. Yes. Like that is a very big part of what funds us. Well, we would like to help them and we were asking you to help us help them. Last year, we did a white lightning version of the banana for charity. This year, we're doing a midnight more of air. Look at this thing. Look at how nice that is. 100% of the proceeds from the sales of this car are going to the Dove Center. They're gonna be using that money to change people's lives. And today, November 13th, the sales of the regular Morver will be going to the Dove Center fundraiser. There will also be a cash donation button on the website for those of you that would like to help out that way. SEMA 2022 was a blast. It was really a lot of work, but it was also a lot of fun, totally worth it. Thanks to Harbor Freight for inviting us down and supplying us with a space to park this truck. And now it's time to get back to work on it that's what we're gonna be doing moving forward thanks for watching all right so the record can't really shoot the lines out we're gonna show you how we did that did you get the shot <laughs> <laughs>